Okay. So, oh, this is tricky. Um, this is so much fun to think about. So, for example, uh, which rows are new? If you look at order ID number three, order ID number three is different in the two different data centers. In production, order ID number three means one thing. In DR, order three means a completely different order. Order ID number two is actually in production, but not in DR. Does that mean order ID number two is a new order that needs to be inserted? Somehow we need to capture the fact that Brent canceled his order because that's really a business problem, not a data problem. The business might say, well, Brent did cancel his order. We should refund that, even though it's our systems that were in the wrong. We have to figure out what the difference between a new order and a different order is. That's way trickier than it looks. Or you take customers. Customer ID number two is who exactly? Is it Bill Gates at Hotmail? Is it Bill Gates at Outlook? Are those two different customers? Or is it the same customer that changed a couple of different things about his account during the process of it? This is even a really simple demo. This is about as pure and quick and painless as I could make it work for you guys. There's only one database. There's no triggers. There's no foreign key integrity or cascading deletes. There's no agent jobs that are firing off every 60 seconds and doing wide ranging problems. This isn't just an availability groups problem either. This is anything that does changes in a database, any kind of relational database. When I force a database online with allowed data loss, that's what that means. I'm going to end up losing data inside this. People will sometimes say, well, I'm just going to go get Redgate data compare or schema compare and look at the differences between those databases. That's just the starting point because say you take order ID number two, it's in one database and not in the other. What's the right thing to do? Do we just insert it back in? What about order ID number three? Things like Redgate data compare are just going to tell you that order ID three is different on both systems. But does that mean that they're different orders or is it the same order? You and I can look at that and say, well, clearly order ID number three is different across those two systems. One of them is from one customer and the other one is from another customer. So as long as there's differences between rows, we should treat them as two different sets of rows, except that falls apart. On the customer's table, on the customer's table, I have one customer with two different sets of data about him. Is that two different customers? Do I start forking his order history? Man, data comparison problem, data comparison tools aren't going to solve this. Really, identity uh, fields cause me more problems than they solve. This is one of the beauties of GUIDs. People, especially database administrators, love to bash GUIDs as bad design or it's constantly causing fragmentation. But what if everyone had a GUID as their clustered index, their primary key? We wouldn't have to worry about, is this one order or two orders? You can spray orders all over the place, and they're all unique and different because they're all their own GUIDs. Also, I worry about deletes. Whenever someone deletes a row, how do I know if I actually should delete it out of the database? Could I do soft deletes instead, meaning have a field in every table that says is deleted, yes or no, and then just set that, maybe even add a timestamp as to when each row was last updated. But the stuff that's here on the screen, these aren't DBA changes. These are developer changes. These are application code changes in order to make this work. So what I want to do when someone says there's a possibility that we might fail over our data center and lose data, like we're going to design something that uses asynchronous replication between data centers, I want to get a business stakeholder and a lead developer into a room and walk them through this exact same exercise. You guys get the PDF so you can walk them exactly through this along with these little pieces of paper 
so that they see it's not a database problem. It's an app problem. I can't solve this as a database administrator. I just need the company to be aware of what limited tools I have at my disposal. There's no way that the DBA can make it work. I'm not trying to come up with the answer. I just want them to get that it's an app problem. And then it's time for them to decide whether or not we're going to prep for it. Because it's normal when I start sketching this out with uh, lead developers, architects, they'll go, oh my God, this would be like six months worth of work for us to figure out how to make this work. Okay, that's cool. You just need to talk to the business and decide whether you want to. Because I don't care. It really makes no difference to me as to whether or not we prep for this. This is a development decision. If you want to add timestamps on every table, add is deleted fields. If there's something that I can do to help you from an ex execution perspective, I would love to. But let's just sketch out how much work would be involved in order to pull off this project. Then work with the business to say, all right, that would take us six months of work and tons of revenue in order to pull off. How about instead we just say, we're willing to walk away from up to 30 minutes of data loss. That if we have 30 minutes or less of lost data, we're just going to walk away from it and never come back. The key is understanding this ahead of time before the disaster strikes. Because if I say this afterwards, after the disaster strikes, always management looks and says, why didn't you warn us about this beforehand before we did the failover? Like, look, I told you, it said force failover with allowed data loss. That's what data loss means is we're going to lose data and I don't have a way to fix it. If it's serious enough, because sometimes I actually do come into shops and they say, you know what? We're not allowed to lose data. We can go down, but we just cannot lose data. What you can do is build in enforcement tools. Here's what that looks like. What if in the primary data center, we had an app that pinged out to the rest of the world and said, can I talk to Yahoo? Can I talk to CNN? Can I talk to whoever a DNS provider is? Can I talk to, you know, Hotmail? And if I can't talk to 60% of those sites for 60 seconds, I'm just going to shut the primary SQL server down. That's horrifying. I mean, you think about that code, it better be doggone accurate. Because if I even have a VPN blip for 60 seconds, I'm going to be shutting the primary down. If he's doing backups, a check DB, I don't care. He has to come down because the business has told me I'm not allowed to lose data. And I got to be able to reverse engineer back however much data we lost. Microsoft SQL Server's vNext is going to start to introduce some pieces of this to have what they call a minimum commit count or a minimum replica count so that if a certain number of replicas in the cluster aren't online and accepting writes, just shut the whole thing down. Because in our class scenario, if I had two replicas in production and one in DR, if the business told me you're never allowed to lose data, well, I need commits across all three of those SQL servers. And if one of these SQL servers goes down, I just want to take the whole cluster down because I've committed that I'm not losing data as long as this cluster is up. New feature coming out in SQL Server VNX there. Until today, you're left to your own devices to roll these kinds of enforcement tools. To recap what we talked about, near zero data loss is really easy in theory. It's really hard in practice. In practice, it's much harder to say we're never going to lose data and we're only going to be down for, say, 60 seconds. And it's not just a DBA production. It's a matter of getting everyone on the same team, getting the application developers to commit to this as well. At one conference, I delivered this exact same session at where we talked about sketching out high HA and DR infrastructure. I had an architect come up to me afterwards and he said, I just want you to know that I hate you now because we just got done implementing a whole AG scenario where we told the business we would never lose data. And I truly can't lose data. I'm a financial provider, stock trades, that kind of thing. I said, so uh, I said, at least, you know, now. And he said, yeah, I said, so what are you going to do? He said, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to come back to you on that. The next year I saw him at the same conference and he came up to me afterward and he said, do you remember me? You know, we talked about the zero data loss thing. And I said, yeah. So what'd you end up doing? He said, well, what we do every time we write to SQL server, we also write to a NoSQL data store and we log 
every query we're going to run that will change data. Every insert, every update, every delete, every stored procedure execution. We log when it started, we logged when it finished, and whether or not it finished successfully. So that if I have to fail over from one data center to another, I have a list of all of the transactions I just need to go play against the SQL server. And we built a multi-threaded replay tool that plays things back in the right order over against this other SQL server as well. I said, wow, man, that's pretty impressive. I said, was that hard? And he said, yeah, it took a full time team time of developers several months in order to do it. But when you're not allowed to lose data, this is what it is. Uh, Fred says, are all these fe type features coming to SQL Server on Linux? So it's interesting that Microsoft is not publishing what they are committing to. What they're doing so far is every community preview. They're just saying, here's the parts we support now. Um, so for example, in CTP 1.4, the last one they shipped, before that, get date didn't work, agent jobs didn't work. And there wasn't a committed list of these are the parts that are going to work and will fix. It's just we're working on it as fast as we can. So we'll see what happens. <laughs>